hieroglyphic inscriptions and we study public relations so we could be able to deal with all the nationalities. Okay? I'm working as a tour guide from something like 10 years. Okay? I've been to Philae, Abu Simbul, Luxor, Abidus, Dindara, Kina, and Asyud, and all the places more than 250 times. Okay? Uh, Besides, guiding is a hobby for me. I like to be a tour guide. It's not something that I don't like to do. You know, it's, it's something like I really love to do. Okay? So what we are going to explain during all our trip is going to be really useful for you after that. So I want you to focus with me while I'm explaining because some things would be really interesting for you and even when you tell it after that to your friends. Okay? Got that, John? That okay? John, right? John. Yes. It's John. Okay. <clears throat> First, you need to know that over here, this temple used to be far away from here by 400 meters away. Behind the tree over there, the original place of this temple used to be over there. After building this temple, the original builders, they never imagined that water will enter here one day. But because the man by his nature is unkind, so he started building dams. Because of building the low dam, the water level increased by 4 meters high. So the lower level of the temple had been covered under the water. <clears throat> and during that time, the Egyptian Supreme Council of Antiquities, they don't have enough money to protect the temple like that. So they leave the temple for 58 years under the water. Till exactly 1960, building the high dam. After they built the high dam, the temple had been trapped between the two dams. So the water level increased again to be 8 meters high. So all the lower level, if you look over there on the pylon, <clears throat> you're going to find another dark line over there. This is the second level of the water. But this time, the temple was very lucky. A very famous traveler was over here with her Filuke man. Her name is Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie wrote about the temple in her movie, Death of the Mind. And because of that, all the world started to change his vision to how we could protect this Egyptian heritage. So, UNESCO started to send messages to the Supreme Council of Antiquities telling them that we need to make an agreement which is exchanging cultures. Which means, any country who will come by the UNESCO who is going to supervise completely moving a temple, they will take a part of the temple to show it outside. And that was the agreement. To Reno Museum was that time the museum who agreed to help to move the temple of Phila. So they built a huge steel dam covering the whole area by 2,000 square meters. They covered the timbal with 20 tons of sand, so the sand absorbed the water inside, and they put the bumps on the side of the timbal to bump out the sand with the water. And after they dried the timbal totally inside, they start to send their teams to clean the walls from the, you know, the mud and the garbage and all the green things and everything, till they completely finished the timbal totally. And after that, the moving was an Egyptian idea by someone called Osman Ahmad Osman. He suggested saying why we don't dismantle the temple into parts. And this idea has been recommended. I want you just to open your imagination a little bit. He start cutting this temple for 46,000 blocks. Each block weighed from 3 to 7 tons. And they mark the blocks by these coins. So if you look down there, you're going to find the coin with number. So in every block you're going to find coins with numbers while we're walking. And they cut the timber, moving the timber from Philae Island to Angelica Island over here, 1970 to 1982. Billions of dollars have been spent over here to this great project. And it's not only Philae that have been moved, many timber have been moved behind Lake Nasser, Kalabsha, Wadi Sibua, Amada, Abu Simbul, Castle of Ibrahim, all of that have been moved by the UNESCO and all the other countries. But we can say that we own a favor for the famous Agatha Christie and also the people who come to learn us how to take care of our heritage. The temple that you are standing over here dates back to exactly 250 BC, 250 BC, which means that this temple is standing from 2,500 years ago. The whole temple over here, the whole temple, had been built of sandstone, sandstone parks. They brought this sandstone parks from a quarry far away from here by 45 kilometers using huge what we call filuka boats filuka boats it's something like sailing boat but the sailing boat could be something like 45 meters or 50 meters long that would be a really huge boat to make something like that 
and to bring the blocks. They wait for the Nile flood so the water level increase so they could sail safely from the north to here to put the blocks with each other. Okay? You need to know that the temple is the house of the God. So when you come to the temple over here, you shave your head, you wear a galabia, and on the feet you wear sandals. And when you come over here, you start to give offerings and sacrifices. But you could not come over here to have fun. You, know, you could not come over here running or spitting or doing anything. This is the house of God. In the hieroglyphic, they call it Bir Ra. Bir means the great house. Ra is the sun god. That's why when you come to the house over here, you behave yourself. You behave yourself. Which means that this was not a place to live. It's a place for doing ceremonies and for worshiping. It's like the church and the mosque. So you come over here and you start reading the hieroglyphic inscriptions. These hieroglyphic inscriptions is like the Bible and the Quran. And because of that, when you come over here, you have to be very careful on treating with the priests. With the priests. So the Egyptian temple used to have priests. So priests looks like monks. So those priests have to be very well educated and very religious. Their only job, the priests over here, is to inspire and to choose gods and goddesses. So the priests used to leave their houses for something like four or five months. And they come over here to this island specifically to inspire. They sit under the tree and they see the falcon flying very high up there. And when he see anything, he go down to attack. So they call the falcon in hieroglyphic, Hor, which then after that by the Greeks they call it horse to be easy to pronounce. And they saw the crocodile on the river Nile and they named him by So Bik. So means he who caused Bik come from pregnant. He who caused women to be pregnant. Why? Because he is a very fertile reptile and he has 50 to 60 eggs every time. So they choose him to be the god of fertility. He see the lion and the female lion. And he found that the lion is usually lazy, sitting under the tree waiting for the food to come to him. But the female, she always go for hunting. That's why the, he chose her and he named her Sikhmet. And it means she who bring the flesh. She who bring the flesh, that's her name. And she is the goddess of war. Any god who have been chosen in ancient Egyptian gods and goddesses, it's actually chosen from the nature. We have more than 67 <coughs> gods. 67 gods. Uh, would you please take off your food from... Just sit down, but take off the food, please. Uh, so, um, we have more than 67 gods and goddesses in ancient Egypt. All of them have been worshipped between Aswan and Luxor. I, I actually, I don't want to make you confused, but just to finish most of the things or the brief, the name of Philae comes from Bilak. Bilak means the last Egyptian border in hieroglyphic. Greeks, they have a Greek god called Pegasus, so they call it Bija. Romans, they have a Roman emperor called Philadelphus, so they call it Philos, which then became an Arabic Philae. So Bilak, Bija, Philos, Philae, that means the last Egyptian border or the end. Over here, this temple is built for three gods. The falcon head god who looks like a falcon, his name is Horus. And another god who's called Osiris, he is the god of death. And Isis, she is the goddess of beauty, magic, and virginity. Okay? So we'll talk about them when we go. Till now, everything is clear for you? Yes. But in which century, which 